Welcome into another video. This time we're going over the NFC East depth chart. I hope you enjoy. NFC East, talk about the first team here. We're gonna talk about the Philadelphia Eagles. Now this is a team that surprised a lot of people last season. They ended up doing a lot of things that uh, some teams, they, they, they're like, there's no way that this team can do this, but Jalen Hurts ended up growing into a player that everybody got super excited for. Uh, looking at the wide receiver position, AJ Brown, Devonta Smith, we know what we're getting out of these guys. Uh, these guys are top tier type of wide receivers in the league. Uh, they got Olamide Zacchaeus over here from Atlanta, a decent serviceable wide receiver three for this team. Uh, Quez Watkins, uh, Tyree Cleveland, Britain Kobe, all these guys, don't worry about them. Even Greg Ward, even the rookie uh, Joseph Nagata. I wouldn't worry about these guys. I just don't think they're going to be fantasy relevant for your fantasy team. The biggest guys you want to talk about is AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. And if you have a flex spot at the bottom and you need to have a desperate uh, type of play, Olami Zacchaeus would be a decent play um, for you. At the running back position, it's going to be a little bit new here. No more Miles Sanders, but they did end up trading for DeAndre Swift. If he can stay healthy, I think Swift could be a good option for this team. Um, if Swift doesn't hey, stay healthy, I think that uh, Rashad Penny will be the starting running back here um, for this football team. They also have Kenneth Gainwell and Boston Scott. They both re-signed these guys, um, and they're a good third down back. I don't think they're very good to be the 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 biggest role uh, for for this team, but I'll let you know. But Files, I hope you're doing well. Hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it, um, and then we kind of go from there. But um, at tight end, we got Dallas Goddard, really nice, good young um, tight end. I think he's got a really good future uh, for this team. Uh, I'm excited about the. I'm, I'm just excited about the Eagles. I think they're going to do really well. Um, they're really good fantasy targets. There's a lot of people you could pluck off of this offense to be good for your fantasy team. I'm, I'm just excited for. It. I'm super excited for these guys. But let's go over to the next team in the NFC East. Uh, let's go ahead and. and uh, and talk about the Dallas Cowboys, right? The Dallas Cowboys is, is America's team, right? Quote, unquote. A lot of people uh, want to look at these guys and, and 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 say, oh, you know, and hate on them all the time. But you know what? They could be a fantasy relevant team. Uh, looking at the wide receivers here, Michael Gallup, Brandon Cooks, and CeeDee Lamb, the number one wide receiver there. Um, he really came out. He had a breakout season last season. I think he's going to continue doing that. Uh, Michael Gallup doesn't have to be the wide receiver two anymore since they acquired Brandon Cooks from Houston. So the offense definitely got better. They definitely got better. They got uh, Simi Fajoko and Jalen Tobert. I like these two um, wide receivers as well. I think they're good young wide receivers that can start. They can keep just developing in this offense, right? So I really like the whole wide receiver group. I think you're going to get a, a lot of good um, competition, a lot of good opportunities with these guys. As long as Dak Prescott can be more consistent for some reason, one game he'll throw 400 yards and three touchdowns, and the other game he'll throw 100 yards and three interceptions. So... You know, it's just, what are you going to get out of Dak Prescott? If he can stay consistently well, it looks like you got a lot of good targets here. Um, at the tight end position, they ended up uh, moving on from their last tight end, uh, Dalton Schultz. And it, was, it was supposed to be the Jake Ferguson and Peyton Hendershot type of, of, of league uh, for, this, for this team for this year. And they ended up drafting Jake Shoemaker. Now, I really like this tight end. It's a tight end that fits well. He's almost like a miniature Dalton Schultz anyway. So it's like, I think Shoemaker will be the number one tight end for this team. I think he's going to make some 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 noise and splash. Hey, Cos, what's going on? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing really good. Appreciate you stopping in. Yo, appreciate you. Uh, hit, yeah, now your main. What is your main channel? Your main channel is the, um, with the, um, uh, what do you call it? Pokemon, right? I know you do know me the Pokemon. Hit the like button for me. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you stopping in, man. But going back to the running backs here. Um, Tony Pollard and Malik Davis. You know, we have Ezekiel Elliott. They ended up moving on from him. Um, Tony Pollard should be the starting back, but he's really not like a true three down back. Um, I really appreciate you, bro. Appreciate that. But Tony Pollard's going to be the starter as of right now. I know a lot of people in the fantasy community is excited about Tony Pollard and what he can do in this offense. Malik Davis coming in, he could be serviceable type of backup. Uh, there's a guy that they drafted. Um, and later in the draft, and that's going to be Deuce Vaughn out of Kansas State. It's a really, really small back, um, but I think they're just going to give him uh, every opportunity. Jock Vaughn, I believe, is his father, and I believe he is uh, part of the coaching staff or um, recruiting staff for the Dallas Cowboys, and they ended up drafting Vaughn, so they're going to give him an opportunity to succeed. So, Mona, how are you doing? Good afternoon, or good morning, I should say. Um, hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you guys for stopping in. I really do appreciate that. Um, 
but that'll be pretty much it for this team. Let's go on to another team for um, the NFC East, and we're going to talk about the New York Giants. So the Giants there, it's the big headache with the Giants, right? We're talking about the wide receivers here, Isaiah Hodgins, Darius Slayton, Paris Campbell. They got the rookie Jalen Hyatt, which is probably the biggest bright star you can talk about with this with this uh, wide receiving court. They've just got a bunch of people that just are really unproductive. I really don't know how Daniel Jones does it with these putrid of, of, of receivings options that he's got. Wondell Robinson. Uh, I mean, I, I would say Jalen Hyatt's my number one here. Uh, Wondell Robinson's my number two guy that I'm really looking for. And probably Isaiah Hodgins is number three. But uh, Sterling Shepard, he can't stay healthy whatsoever. But out of these six wide receivers, you're probably going to get one fantasy relevant guy. We just don't know who it's going to be. If I had to put my money on one fantasy relevant guy this season, I'd probably say Wondell Robinson just based on this is his second year. Um, and he has the ability to do some good things. But um, at tight end, they ended up getting Darren Waller over from the Raiders. Uh, Daniel Bellinger was the tight end last year. He was okay, but nothing really to, to be excited about. But Darren Waller can actually make some noise, especially if he can, can produce some type of rapport um, with Daniel Jones. So. So Kaz says, I am a Seahawks fan. Seahawks, I'm telling you, you got a lot of, uh, to be excited about, especially if Geno Smith stays healthy. We're going to be going over um, the Seahawks here shortly, and we're going to talk about their depth chart as well. But um, Seahawks got, I'm telling you, for fantasy, for fantasy football-wise, it's kind of upsetting based on the Charbonnet draft. But, you know, it is what it is. At the running back position, Saquon Barkley here for the Giants. Oh, man, I wish they would just sign this guy. As of right now, he's probably going to be on the franchise tag because they can't come up with a long-term type of agreement with Saquon Barkley. So uh, Matt Breida is going to be his backup. And there is a running back that I need everybody to be attention for, uh, to pay attention for, and that's going to be Eric Gray out of Oklahoma. Uh, Eric Gray could be a, a decent running back for Barkley. He's not this explosive type of running back, but a serviceable one that if Barkley tends to miss some time, I think Eric Gray can definitely beat Matt Breida out. And Eric Gray could be the absolute, you know, stud for this team. So we're gonna have to just see how that goes. So let's move on to the next team for the AFC uh, for the NFC East, and that's gonna be the Washington Commanders. Now this is a team right here that not a lot of people are gonna be excited about, but we can probably find a couple options here for fantasy football if we really look closely. Looking at the wide receiver court, this is what I really like about the Commanders: Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, and Curtis Samuel. Samuel's kind of the the gadget guy. Had a little bit better of a fantasy season last year than I believe he will have this year because I do believe Jahan Dotson will take the step to be a better wide receiver this season. Terry McLaurin also is going to be a very good wide receiver as we know. Now at the quarterback position, Sam Howell will be the starting quarterback, and I thought for sure that the Commanders would have added somebody in the NFL draft to take and compete with how but they did not they're committed to how this season to seeing how he could do he was a rookie last year now he's coming in here and he's got the reins you know they got Jacoby Brissett uh, behind him I think it's going to be a good opportunity uh, for Sam Howell if he's going to be good in the NFL we're going to have to see what he does so at the tight end position they got Logan Thomas he's getting a little older now but he's still a good serviceable pass catching tight end could be a, there's a lot of some weapons around Sam Howell to be successful. It's just up to him on whether or not he is going to be uh, successful or not. Does he get into that to, to the weight room? Does he get to the training room? Does he watch the film? We're going to have to see what Sam Howell gives us. So at the running back position, um, Brian Robinson and Antonio Gibson still sharing these load here. I do like the rookie Chris Rodriguez. I think he can do some things. I just don't think he's going to have the opportunity behind the young Brian Robinson. I think he's going to really take the reins this year but that kind of sums up the nfc east as always thank you for watching the video as we continue to pop out weekly videos to help you best prepare for your fantasy football leagues and ultimately win a championship i can't wait to see you guys on the next video we'll see you guys next time